Hey guys, Lena Abjammer here checking in with you on uh, this YouTube channel. So excited to be back with you, YouTube friends. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do it now. I am an ER doctor by day and a Bible teacher by night. And basically uh, here, I answer questions that you send me about faith, culture, life, and everything in between. And so in a second, we'll get to the Dear Lena uh, question. In the meantime, let me remind you that the goal here is to provide biblical truth for everyday life. So I try to keep things simple and uh, sort of uh, think through things from a biblical worldview. If uh, you are a Christian living in a post-Christian world, then odds are you need hope. And that's what we try to do here. So without further ado, let me give you today's question. Someone wrote and said, Dear Lena, who is the Holy Spirit and how can I experience him more? That is a great question. I can't wait to answer it because this is uh, the essence of the Christian life. And so much of what we uh, I grew up knowing and hearing in church now has become a little bit less taught because we just don't go to church as much. And if you're living in the COVID era, many of you have not been able to go to church at all. And so uh, there are a lot of gaps in our in our knowledge of scripture. And I think it's important to stop for a minute and acknowledge sort of uh, some of those things. And so let me start with um, the first uh, point to this question, which by the way, was very astutely asked. The person wrote, who is the Holy Spirit? They didn't ask, what is the Holy Spirit? And so here's the first point. The Holy Spirit is a person and not an experience. All right, you need to first start with that. Uh, the Holy Spirit is part of the triune God, the Christian God, uh, uh, it, as presented in the Bible, is a trinity. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're three in one, and it's a mystery how it all works out. But the Holy Spirit is who Jesus promised would come to live in the believers at salvation. And so I love my favorite section about the Holy Spirit is Jesus' sermon on him in John 14, 15, and even going into 16. So I just want to read you a few highlights. I think it's important. Uh, and starting with, let's say, verse uh, John 14, verse 17. Jesus says, even, actually, verse uh, 16. He says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. So Jesus' solution, when he leaves earth, he's like, listen. In fact, a little bit later, he says, uh, he says it, is, um, it is to your advantage in, in John 16, uh, verse 7. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. There are other verses in John, John uh, 15, 26, uh, on and on. If you read those chapters, you're going to see all that the Holy Spirit has promised to do. He comforts us. He teaches us. He convicts us. And Jesus promises that he comes to live in us. In fact, the minute you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, his Holy Spirit comes and lives in you. And and so while you can experience the life empowered by the Holy Spirit, it is the person of the Holy Spirit you must strive to know. And so let me kind of narrow in a little bit more on that. I, my first point was the Holy Spirit is a person, not an experience. Jesus promises a person to come to live in us. Okay, He's a spirit, but he's a person. He's referred to as a he. And throughout scripture, there's this understanding. I mean, God is not a he or a she. He's a spirit. But, 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 but the Holy Spirit is someone you can talk to. We pray in Romans 8 and the Spirit makes intercession for us. And so um, many Christians sort of have this, you know, fuzzy wuzzy experience feeling, you know, we go to a worship meeting and we sing, oh, I felt the Holy Spirit. And we miss the fact when we make the Holy Spirit an experience, we miss the fact that he is a person who is with us always. He's in us. He's with us. And he's meant to teach us, to love us, to comfort us, to be with us. And, 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 and we'll get to living in awareness of the Holy Spirit in a minute, but this is an essential thing. So while the Holy Spirit um, can be what you can have moments in the Christian life where you must be, where you might be empowered by Him, or you might experience the manifest presence of God. He is a person who is always in you and with you. So while you might feel like sometimes the other side of the coin is that sometimes we feel like the Holy Spirit is missing in our life. So while we might feel like He's missing in our life, God's Word promises that He is in us the moment we give our life to Jesus. So there's sort of two extremes. There's an the extreme that says, "Oh, I feel Him all the time," and they make the Holy Spirit all about experience, and that is not a biblical truth. I mean, can you experience moments where you feel awareness of the Holy Spirit more than others? For sure. But, but he's with you always. And the other side, which is, man, I just don't even feel him. And so I'm not even, I'm not even aware of whether he's here and whether you feel him or not doesn't change the reality that if you have received God as your Jesus Christ, as your savior, God puts the Holy Spirit in you and he seals you. In Ephesians, it talks about we're being, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. And in Corinthians, Paul talks about it all over the New Testament. We see this thought. In fact, even in the Old Testament, Ezekiel talks about how a 
the Spirit will come live in us. We become a new creation and on and on and on. So the Holy Spirit, a person, not an experience. Number two, the Holy Spirit is limited to the extent that we quench and grieve him. All right. We can do something about, about how much we feel the Holy Spirit in our life. Ephesians 4 is a great verse for this where Paul reminds us, he says, um, let all bitterness, and actually he says, in, in, let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up. And then he says in verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. And so Paul reminds us that you can grieve and quench, quenching meaning like turning, it's like a fire that you quench by pouring water on it. So you stop the fire. Many Christians are guilty. I have been guilty in my life of quenching the Holy Spirit of God. And we do it by willful sin, unconfessed sin, persisting with a lack of dependence of God. In fact, the most common way we quench the Spirit of God is by living independent of Him. We live as if we don't need Him. We live as if we don't recognize His presence. And no wonder so many of us are like, I don't see a Holy Spirit in my life because we're living in a way that has taken his, his voice in our life and reduced it not just to a whisper, but to an inaudible. You ever watch football? There's the inaudibles and most of us can't read lips. And so we can't see, we can't hear what the Holy Spirit is whispering to us because we've quenched Him over time. So the most common way we grieve the Holy Spirit is by doing what grieves him. And so you want to know, like, how, how can I grieve the Spirit? Look at Galatians chapter 5, where he talks about walking in the Spirit and not in the flesh. The opposite of walking in the Spirit is walking in the flesh. And so look at the list of sins that God says, but all of them are rooted in a lack of obedience, lack of desire to obey, to do what the Holy Spirit, what pleases him. And so it goes back, actually, we'll get to that in a second. So the more we seek to live for the Holy Spirit, for God, the more we will become aware of the still small voice that tells us when we are quenching and when we are grieving him. The best way to hear the Spirit of God is to yield in obedience more and more and more each day. If you feel like, man, I can't hear him right now, you search your heart. Ask God. God, search me. Like David prayed in Psalm 139. Search me and know me and see if there's any wicked way in me. And take a journal and start writing and say, God, I confess the sin. I repent of these things and mean it. And as you do that, God, I guarantee you, the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life is going to be amplified like you have beats on and you can hear him and you can't hear anybody else the question in life is who are you listening to the flesh or the spirit the more you yield to the spirit in fact that brings me to the third point the holy spirit is available to you to the extent that you give him the freedom to rule in your life listen you'll have as much of the holy spirit as you want in fact while every christian has the holy spirit it is the extent that the holy spirit has you that will make all the difference in the world Every Christian is given the Holy Spirit. But what makes one Christian on fire for God and living in obedience and yielded to God? Well, it's how much of them, of me, does the Holy Spirit have? And so if you're wondering, man, I don't know. I don't see the Spirit of God. Maybe there's little windows of time where you see the Spirit of God move in your life, but not enough. There might be an area in your life that you're grieving Him in. And you might just need to search your heart, ask God to search your heart. And then bring that area that you're still holding on to. Maybe you're in a you know tug of war with God and you keep pushing and God's like, listen, man, you're not going to win this. When will you let go and give the Holy Spirit access to every room in your house, every drawer in every room? Listen, I love this sentence. I've said it before. I, I keep it on a yellow piece of paper in my Bible. It says, the amount of power you experience to live a victorious, triumphant Christian life is directly proportional to the freedom you give the Spirit to be the Lord of your life. You are more power. You yield even more. You want to see God move in your life more. You get rid of what needs to get rid of, and you say yes to God more. Hey, uh, who is the Holy Spirit, and how can I experience him more? First of all, recognize that he is in you. And if you don't know the Lord, accept Jesus Christ into your heart so that the Holy Spirit will seal you until the day of redemption. And then look in your life, what is it that's quenching him? And then say yes, yes, yes. Over and over again, tell God yes in any area that he asks you to. Hey, uh, that's it for today. If you want to subscribe to the channel, do so. If you've got emails for me, send them at dearlina at livingwithpower.org. And hey, while you're at it, stop at our website, livingwithpower.org. You'll see plenty of information and resources and uh, devotionals. You name it, we've got it for you. It's free. And you can join our Facebook community. Just click on the top blue box at livingwithpower.org at the blue box that says join our community. Hey, I'd love to meet you in person someday. Until then, know that God loves you more than anything in the world. You have a great day.